Okay, so today we're going to learn how to, um, different tools to manipulate text. And these are the kind of things that you can use in artwork or anything like logo and branding type projects that you might have incorporating text in your art. So the first thing I'm going to teach you is a tool called the Envelope Distort Tool, and it's under um, Object up at the top uh, window. And first, before we do anything with that tool, we first have to type something out. So I would go to the Type Tool, which is the letter T on your side um, toolbar. And once you click down on it, it usually defaults to some random Latin word, but um, just backspace on it and just start to type out anything just for practicing. I'm just going to type my name. And you, once you type it, you can also scale it by using the black arrow. You can hold shift and scale your text bigger if you like. If you don't want to hold shift, you can distort it so that it's wider than it is tall. Um, you can you know, you can play with the text tool with the black arrow in any way. You can um, manipulate it that way as well. But one thing I wanted to show you is a bunch. There's a bunch of fun tools in the the envelope distort tool. So you can go under Object, Envelope Distort, and there's um, a tool called Make with Warp. And if you click on that, I wanted to show the under the Make with Warp um, options. Under style, there's a whole bunch of different styles of the way you can manipulate your text. So I'm just going to show you and play with some of these so you can see what they do to my text. So once I click on it, always make sure any of these boxes that have a preview button at the bottom in this left hand corner, check on it because once you do that, if you have it checked and you actually can see your text manipulate in live time. So you can see that my text, which once was a straight word that said Debbie, now is bowed kind of arced lower. You can see that it kind of makes like a U shape to my text. Now watch what happens when I do arc upper. So you can make it so it's rounded at the top. You can play with any of these options and there's so many here that each one has its own distinct look and each one will manipulate your text in a certain way. Um, so you can go through like this one's a flag one so it makes it look like a wavy flag. You can also play with um, these scrolling bars across and you can make the bend a lot more severe. Like every time I scroll over and increase it, the bend becomes even taller. Um, you can play with the bend being a little bit taller on one side and a little bit more narrow on the other. Same thing with the vertical. These are a whole bunch of tools that you can easily play after you picked your style. First you pick your style and then you can manipulate and play with the bend, dis distortion, horizontal, and vertical tools after. But each one of these carries its own kind of look. So I encourage you to kind of play with this and see if there's anything in here that you actually like and want to work with when creating um, artwork or your logo. So one thing I wanted to show you also is even after um, you pick something in here and again have your preview button checked so you can see what it's doing. You can hit OK, and even after you've picked one of those tools in the envelope distort function, you can continue with the black arrow to manipulate it and scale it um, by either dragging it up and down, holding shift to keep it proportional, or not holding shifts because you want it to have more of a skewed look. Um, but once you, um, let me just see if it changes here. Nope. Once you create that text that you like, then that can be put onto any kind of logo design. So if I wanted to create a hang tag, which is usually a long skinny rectangle shape, I can have my new logo sitting inside of a hang tag. And a hang tag, if you are working on some kind of hang tag design, usually has a little circle at the top. And this is for a rope or a piece of string to hang to loop through so that the hang tag can actually attach to your garment. So if you are working on a hang tag design, this would be one example of my logo being used in a hang tag. 
And then if I wanted to take that same logo and now use it in a main label, which is something that's featured in the back neck of garments or in the inside waistbands of pants, you can create your main label as a square shape just like you did the rectangle. It's usually a lot smaller, it's not as tall. It's usually a little bit wider and um, not as tall, but this is again an example of my logo inside of a hang uh, inside of a main label. The one thing I will comment about is that a main label is always stitched to the garment, so you also have to add a row of stitching all the way around the hang tag. Um, so you want to make sure you can, if you're doing, I'm sorry, all the way around a main label. So main label is stitched through to a garment, so you always want to make sure there's stitching all the way around four sides of your box, which is your main label. Your hang tag is just a loose um, piece of cardboard or paper that's usually attached to a garment, so there is no stitching involved. It's not stitched through, it's actually just attached through a loop that, go, I mean a string that usually goes through this loop at the top. But here's one example of a hang tag design. And here's an example of a main label design. And then if I wanted to manipulate my text even further, I'm just going to copy out the text itself. I'm going to go to Object Expand and hit OK on expanding both the object and the fill. And what that did was actually make my text as individual filled shapes. So if you see here when I click on it, the D is a filled shape within itself. So I can actually continue to manipulate each one of these letters because now they all have their own vector points. So I'll just show you again what I did here is once that tool that I use, that envelope distort tool, still keeps it within a text format so you can see that it's actually the whole thing the whole word Debbie is actually filled with inside of a box a, like an arched box but once I take that copy it and hit object expand and expand both the object and the fill now you can see the difference they're all individual filled shapes, letter shapes. So say for instance I was like I want to change my logo and I want to make the D not as not as um, the space in the D not as wide. I can pull at any individual point and manipulate that. I can take certain points from the letter E and make it a little bit taller and wider in the center. I can drag out part of it this way. I mean you literally can manipulate anything within these letters. You can play with different shapes by pulling at any of these points and continue to manipulate your logo as you see fit so you make it more custom because the, the, the font I chose here was a font that was available to me under the text tool in Illustrator but if you wanted to customize you can also just start to play with the shapes individually and make and make them all different. You can add things to them. You know, I could take the pen tool and add additional stroke lines into my shapes. If I wanted to play with some additional more ideas, um, I can add anything additional there and just continue to play with the tools by adding stroke lines to it if you wanted to, changing the color of the line. Now that your your um, name, now that your logo is actually a filled shape, you can easily then recolor it as well. So when it was under the text, here's the example, when it was under the text you can't the text tool and the envelope distort function, you can't recolor it. You have to do object expand in order to actually recolor the font that you just had. So that's important if you wanted to recolor it and add color. But the one thing that's that's cool is because this, these are individual um, 
individual shapes, each letter, then what I can do is just highlight, actually I'm going to ungroup it, ungroup it so I can pick individual letters. Ungroup. Pick individual letters and I can color them separately by highlighting over the black arrow. But I have to ungroup because first thing when you hit object expand and you expand into making your logo individual shapes, it always comes grouped. So you have to hit, you gotta go object ungroup a couple times until it says, until the ungroup feature is grayed out. And that, that allows you then, to, that releases the, the logo to be ungrouped shape. And then that's when you can go over the individual letters with the black arrow and color them separately. If you try to just color them separately when it was grouped, it won't let you color the whole entire word because it's grouped um, together. So. so this is just a couple different ways that you can play with manipulating just a couple tools as I showed you. So there's, there is the envelope distort function, make with warp, and all these like different fun styles in here that you can play with as well as the bend and the arch distortion vertical and horizontal hit preview and then you also once you do that then you can also expand expand your name your logo um, so that they all become individual filled shapes and you can start to play and manipulate again with individual points and manipulate your logo that way as well, as well as adding additional stroke lines if you see fit. Again, if you're going to add additional stroke lines, I might eventually, when you feel good about what you added, I might take that stroke line and then do again, expand it so that it's actual shape. Let me do that real quick. So here's the difference between my stroke line that was not an expanded shape. It looks like this when I click on it. It just has a center line, a center blue line in the middle, which makes means it's the stroke. It's the stroke of the pen. It just has one line in the middle. But this is what it looks like when I object expand. Now it's an actual shape when I click on it. It has one, two, three, four points, and I can easily manipulate those points again at the top, where I can't do that with the stroke line. If I pull it, it only has one, two points, top and bottom. So that's the difference between using a stroke line. It just has one at the bottom, one point here, one point here, versus the expanded stroke line has one, two, three, four, and it's actually a, a filled shape. So that's the difference between expanding and then just drawing with the stroke um, pen tool. So this is just a few examples on how to use some functions to create a logo design.